Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. We've been expecting you as we do every single week. I am Dr. Nico White, the founder and lead principal consultant for NWC, Nico White Consulting. And we are delighted to have you here with us today for this hour for the Intentional Conversations podcast. We very much look forward to connecting with this community of learners as we learn with and from each other and hold space for what we believe are really important conversations that intersect diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging with leadership in business. I invite you to go to the chat. Let us know where you're joining the conversation from. That is always a treat for us to see the many different geographies that are represented among this community. And we don't take it lightly because we know that you could be doing many different things during this hour, but you're choosing to spend it with us. And for that, we are grateful. At NWC, we really do believe in disability inclusion. So we have enabled the closed caption feature for those that would love to have that as a benefit for your experience today. And so I wanted to put that into your hearing. I also want you to know that if you desire to connect with this community beyond this hour of time, then share your LinkedIn information into the chat that lets us know that you are willing for us to be in community and to share resources and to connect on LinkedIn. And I, for certain, am delighted to be connected with any of you. So my team will share my LinkedIn information into the chat as well. If you are here today and part of the Zoom community, then cameras are encouraged. Um, but there aren't required. We certainly realize that sometimes people are multitasking or maybe just kind of listening in while you're um, just doing some other things around your, your place of work or your home if you work from home. But nonetheless, we are just so glad that you are here. I see you, Chicago, in the house. I see you, Milwaukee, in the house. Thank you all so much for being here. I do want to recognize the LinkedIn Live audience that we have here with us today. Um, so we are watching the comment section. So if that's how you are receiving this content from today's broadcast, then certainly feel free to leverage the comment section. We are watching that. We're bringing some of those sentiments and comments over into the Zoom community so that we all can be connected. Once again, welcome to Intentional Conversations podcast, and I hope you all enjoy the show. There we go. As the screen says, let the conversations begin. And that is precisely what we are about to do. If you're just tuning in, then you have joined Intentional Conversations podcast. Lucky you. We're so glad you are here. And I want to start by giving you some information just to put into your hearing. We love, love, love at NWC to make sure that we all are aware of some of the national observances. And so April is still in effect. And we are so excited because April is Black Women's History Month. If you didn't know that, then now you know. So I want to make sure that you are aware of that. This is an opportunity for you to learn something about Black women and um, how they show up to the world and all of their many contributions. And so April's not over yet, but we often say, although the National Observance is in that month, we do encourage for us to have these habits top of mind and into our practice every single day. This month is also National Arabic American Heritage Month. And so if you weren't aware of that, then now you know. Again, let's continue to build up these communities by learning more about their cultures and their backgrounds so that we can be great allies and supporters of those communities. Now, one of the things that we like to do at NWC is provide learning opportunities to the broader community. And one way we show up to that is not only through this podcast, but it's also through releasing a video series called Inclusion Uncomplicated. And it's all about simplifying DEI. Every single week, we have a new episode that will release the videos of no more than like two minutes, but it's a packed with a lot of punch. And it's hopefully a way for you to continue deepening your understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So check those out. You can go back and revisit all of the past um, episodes as well through our archive on YouTube. Additionally, we write a lot of blogs, and one of our blogs also um, is part of our LinkedIn presence. And so we have a newsletter called Inclusion Insider. We hope that you will subscribe to that so that you can always be notified every time a new blog is released. The one that just released is called Defending DEI, Challenging Assumptions and Encouraging Curiosity. So I hope you'll take a look at that. There's a lot of, of great insights that I would love to be in conversation with you about. So take a look and let me know what you think. 
Now, if you've been with us for quite some time, you know that more than a year ago, I released book number three, and it's entitled Inclusion Uncomplicated, A Transformative Guide to Simplify DEI. I continue to hear lots of reports from people who are leveraging this tool within their workplaces, personally on their own growth. And so I want to continue to keep this in front of our podcast community. I know that you are so supportive of what we do. And so thank you so very much. If you feel inclined to write an Amazon review, then please do so. Those reviews make a big difference and I greatly appreciate it. LinkedIn Learning. We have two new courses that released about maybe a month ago, and one is Navigating AI Through an Intersectional DEI Lens, and then the second one is Accountability for Leaders, Navigating Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. If you haven't checked out those courses, I encourage you to do so. I'm also super excited to let you know, I'm going to tease you a bit, that course number four is underway. I return back to California next month to record, and I hope that you will stay tuned because I would love for you to also have this fourth course into your consideration set. Thank you again for your support. Now, the recent blog that released, I just shared that we have lots of blogs, is called The Multifaceted Path Forward for DEI. I want you to also check that out. You can do so by going to our website. My team will drop the link directly to this blog article into the chat. Again, we'd love to have some conversations with you about what you're thinking concerning this topic. Now, it does me great pleasure just to give you a little bit of what you have to look forward to um, the remaining months of uh, or weeks of this month of April. And so next week on Friday, April the 26th, I'm so excited because we're going to be welcoming AC Folks. And in that intentional conversation podcast, we're going to be discussing Dr. Folks' book, Transgender Inclusion, all the things you want to ask your transgender coworker but shouldn't. So I hope that you will be here with us for that episode. And then kicking us off for the month of May is my friend Daisy Dominguez. And I am so excited because Daisy has such a wealth of experience in so many different contexts, but she's definitely a champion and advocate of this work of DEI. And I cannot wait for you to be in conversation with her. So join us as we kick off May for a great intentional conversations with my friend Daisy. Now, it does me great pleasure to actually provide a formal introduction for today's guest co-host. And if you've been um, connected with us for a while, you know that it's so important to me to not just present our guest co-host by saying here, she, he, they are, but to actually formally read their bio. I think it's important for each of us to know the, the accolades, the credentials, all of the experiences that our guest co-hosts are showing up to the conversation because it just helps us to get a little bit closely connected to their point of view and their perspective. So today will be no different. Dr. Shanika McIver, founder and chief creative officer of the McIver Group Creative Company since 2018, brings over 15 years of experience from the philanthropic, nonprofit, and business sectors. With a doctorate in leadership studies from North Carolina A&T State University, her work focuses on culturally competent programming and leadership development, particularly for women and people of color. Dr. McKeever's approach combines her passion for creative solutions with a commitment to inclusive and adaptive leadership strategies. Her vision is to empower individuals to align their unique talents with their passions using action-focused strategies to achieve their goals. Under her leadership, the McKeever Group Creative Company offers authentic approaches to problem solving, aiming to make a meaningful difference in communities and organizations. Dr. Shanika's accolades include the 2018 North Carolina Central University 40 Under 40 Alumni Award, Triad Business Journal's 40 Leaders Under 40, and several other recognitions for her contributions to business and community service. She actively contributes to her community, serving on multiple boards and founding the Brown Girl Collective of the Triad, an initiative aimed at fostering a network for women of color professionals in the Triad area. Through her work, Dr. McKeever is dedicated to helping others discover their purpose, build their brand, and leave a lasting impact. So if you've been with us, you know what to do. Find those emojis, find those words of affirmation, find whatever reactions you can, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can bring Dr. Shanika into um, the spotlight with me. And I want you to let her know how much we welcome her being here today with us. I am so grateful. Thank you. And before I release you to um, share with this community and greet this community in your own way, Dr. Shanika, I would love for you to start by sharing with us something that we would not know from listening to your bio, which we just did, or 
from looking at your LinkedIn profile. Welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Nika, for having me. Um, I think the one thing that people would not know about me is that I am an avid baker. Like, I love to bake, um, and it's the one thing part of my talents that I will never monetize heavily because it's just my passion and like when I get stressed out I get in the kitchen and I just bake things and I'm a country girl at heart so I mean I'm talking pound cakes um I do cookies once a year um for my friends and family I bake dozens and dozens of cookies and a few years ago I mastered macaroons so I was really proud of that but I love to bake um yeah that would be my fun fact and that I was supposed to be a city manager <laughs> Okay, you love to bake. I know somebody in the, the chat wants to cook out. It's too bad we aren't in person for this podcast, right? Right, I right. I'd have brought you some treats. Your, your bakery goods. Yes, that would have been fantastic. We definitely would not have minded that at all. Um, so that's, that's awesome. So let's jump right in. I want you to start by telling us a little bit about your background and your journey. What inspired you to start your organization? And again, I want to uh, make sure that everyone is aware of the name the McKeever Group Creative Company, the McKeever Group Creative Company. And so tell us about what your journey has been and um, how it landed you at being the founder of this company. Right. So I tell people like, you know, I feel like my journey and my life has been the story of plan B, right? So like I ended up in entrepreneurship like accidentally on purpose but I tell people you know God makes you uncomfortable when it's time to move so when I kind of went through my PhD process like I knew that I really wanted to develop people and talent and that's just what I've always had a natural knack for and I thought that you know I was gonna be able to like transition into the executive learning and kind of learning and development space but it just didn't happen that way so after going through like and first of all you know being a black woman with a PhD that has its own you know set of Wow. challenges right with marketability right so you know I knew that I wanted to do something that really helps people so um, I went through this like six month job search and so what kind of what was crazy was I had applied for this job on a whim it was like this national position and I waited to the last minute it was like the last day and I really questioned like am I qualified to do this? But what was so crazy was I ended up getting selected for an interview and long story short, ended up going through to be one of the, fi the finalists of a 200 person search. And so it didn't work out for me. But what I learned was that, you know, I'm talented. Like I, I'm that girl. Like I can, you know, compete at this national level. So it made me like, you know, really believe in myself and my, I have this confidence and I'm not going to say cocky because there's a difference, but you need to be confident. And so I really embrace like starting to apply for like these quote unquote big jobs. Like at the time I was in, I was doing higher ed fundraising. Um, I did that for five years. Um, but again, I wasn't a fundraiser. It wasn't, you know, my, passion and I, I'm a passion driven person so you know I encourage people to always tap into your purpose and passion but after going through this search you know I went on a six month job search where I was getting interviews I was getting down to the final round and like nothing was coming through and so I had a conversation with my mentor and at the time she we had this conversation twice right so another lesson here is obedience. So the first time she said it, I wanted no parts of what she had to say. She was like, you know, these jobs aren't working out because that's not what you're meant to do. And, you know, being a first generation um, college graduate, like I'm like, girl, I'm not leaving my good paying job to go into the, you know, wild into entrepreneurship. Like, absolutely not. Like, I, 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 like, I appreciate that. But no, I'm not doing that. So again, God will make you uncomfortable when it's time to move. And someone asked me kind of I call it that was my season of patience right so people someone asked me what happens when you wait and what happens when you wait is usually everything that you thought you were going to do that you thought was going to happen the opposite of that occurs right so that plan b the journey of plan b um so I come into this space I'm um, again no 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 and it was just all these no's and so fast forward it was around my birthday March 2022. And me and my mentor had this same conversation. If, if you want to, you can go to YouTube on my page. And it's uh, the one with Milagros Russell. And we're having this conversation. And she's talking to me. And we had this right before that webinar. And so she's telling me, like, Shanika, you know that God is not going to open those doors for you until you trust him and you take this leap of faith because that's why those jobs are not coming through because that's not what you're meant to do. And he's never going to give you full-time clients because you don't have the capacity to take it on. So I just encourage you to just be open because, you know, 
you're being called to do something. And so in that moment, I actually heard what she said and I wasn't receptive to it before. So, you know, sometimes when you take these leaps and you've got to go on these journeys, you don't necessarily like trust yourself, right? So I had a conversation with my family, my mom, my sisters, because I'm really close with my family. And so they were like, yeah, you can do it. Like I always knew that you could do that. And so I was like, okay, God, well, oh, this is scary, but I trust you. So if I don't have a job within the next three to six months, I'm going to take that as a sign that I'm supposed to, you know, put myself out there and do my own thing. And so um, I was at a women, it was Women's History Month, and I'm at on a panel, and I publicly declared um, on this panel in 2022 that I was going to probably end up quitting my job. And, you know, sometimes you got to speak things into existence, and what better place to hold myself accountable than to put this out there publicly. And so I ended up, was just kind of going through some things um, in my position that I was in dealing with some different microaggressions and again just just dealing with some things that I just didn't enjoy and I wasn't really happy in the work that I was doing and I feel like you spend a lot of time at work so you should have some type of joy or purpose or satisfaction and so um, a series of things happen because again when it's time to get uncomfortable when it's time to move your God makes you uncomfortable but I had to trust the process and so I had to you know say look I'm going to stop applying for jobs if we're going to do this I'm going to trust that this is what we're supposed to do and even and it, and it was some tests it was some really good things that started coming up but I had to kind of again be obedient to what I was called to do and so um, what ended up happening was it was a series of events June 20 May 2022 I ended up putting in my resignation for my job so my last day was uh, June 24th 2022 and within probably a week of putting that resignation in I signed my first four-figure contract it took me like two or three days to put it together because I was just in awe and it's been an up and down process but I've even tried to run back to the safety of work a few times, but I know that what I do is like, it's needed, it's a purpose. And, you know, I was called to do this work because sometimes people just don't understand different things. And so through my own experiences professionally, that's kind of where I started the McKeever Group Creative Company and just being, you know, I spent six years in corporate America where there was nobody in leadership that looked like me. And so I'm just trying to, one, validate these experiences, but also give people tools to really radically redefine how we look at leadership so that we look at leadership from a from an expression of you know just your experiences matter and leadership is in how you show up and sometimes it's not going to be in those traditional constructs that can be you know typically white male experience you've shared so much with us i'm I'm trying to think where i want to go next because i've heard so much in what you just shared first is the importance of having mentors speak into us to help us to recognize our own greatness and then once we get to that place where we start to recognize our own greatness stand in that and be willing to advocate for ourselves you know i often say that it's not bragging it's flagging if it really happened you're just bringing attention of your greatness and your (laughs) credentials and your experience to others and so i love that i also want you to know that as you were talking you kept referencing the journey of plan b i placed into the chat. Yes. <laughs> the journey of plan B sounds like a book title to me. So and I, there's some other folks in this community that also agree. So we're just planting that seed <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, yes. No, but I, I love this for you. And so your work, as you have shared with us with the McKeever group, it focuses on culturally competent programming and leadership development. Is that correct? Dr. Yes. Sneka? Okay. And so I think that I heard when I was reading your bio that you target specifically women and people of color. So that's kind of like your niche and that's that's where you, you're drawn to. Um, so can you expand upon the importance of, of the approach that you take? What Let us know what that approach is and why is that unique approach that you take um, making incredible impact for people that you're connected with? Sure. So, of course, I work with women and people of color, and I also take that a step further, and I help organizations and corporations build capacity around that cultural um, inclusion leadership, and as well as like philanthropy and things of that nature. But for me, it's really, my approach is rooted in, I call it the IA to the third E methodology, but it's really about identifying actionable steps. And so how you would do that would be first, you need to identify like, where are you feeling stuck? What is the issue? What are your pain points? And from that, you have to have a kind of awareness. If you're talking about individuals, that's going to be awareness of self. If you're talking about an organization, that's going to be awareness of culture. If you're talking about a nonprofit, that's going to be awareness of how are you showing up in your community from an impact 
um, perspective, if you're talking about entrepreneurship, what is the purpose of your business? And is it intentional? Because if it's not intentional, why are you doing it? Right. Which leads us to um, our next. So our next piece, which is alignment and alignment is around aligning your purpose and passion with your natural talents, whether that is in an individual perspective, that's, you know, what are you good at? What are you passionate about? Because I feel like, you know, in business, you have to have some passion around it, because if not, when it gets going, the going gets tough, it's going to be really easy to give up and it can't be motivated by making money. Right. And I think from a corporate perspective, it's aligning your leadership development programs or your organization development or your talent culture, talent development around the lived experiences of your people and what they need as individuals, because I have adult learning background, not what you feel like they need as a corporation, because if not, you know, people don't leave jobs, people leave people. So you need to make sure that, you know, that human capital is invested in. And so that's where alignment is important. And then with the the third A of the <laughs> The three is the adaptive leadership framework is which is where my research focus and it's consistent with it's not um the typical I think Lori and Hertz is um it's another framework Glover ETL 2001 okay. and so it's made up of four principles of cultural competency ability to manage knowledge creating synergy and adaptive vision and so what my research found was that that skill set allows women and people of color to adapt into these systems of um, white supremacy cultures or in institutionalized racism or whatever in, or, in order to, you know, achieve success, even though the system was not designed for them to do it. That skill set allowed them to build resilience and grit. But what that tells us is that they don't identify with traditional constructs of leadership, because again, that leadership definition is not for them. And so it creates all these different challenges and barriers. So we need to create spaces where people can show up authentic as their authentic self. And in order to do that, you have to acknowledge lived experience. And so when I had one of the women who was a black CPA that owned her own firm, and we know that's an accomplishment within itself, say that she did not identify as leader because she was used to people mansplaining to her, calling her husband, and it was her business, that's when I knew that we have a leadership problem and it's that it doesn't consider anyone but white males experience. So that's why that adaptive leadership framework is so important. And so my business, um, all the initiatives, my work, how I show up in the world is from that research and creating these safe and authentic spaces for people of color and women to be able to kind of just B, because we need that. And that's kind of what the last A. And then the last part of it is the E, execute. So what are these actionable step-by-step -step ways that you can execute it? And, you know, I'm going to go cultural on you. So I'm a big fan of music. And if anybody's ever listened to um, rap music and Young Jeezy, like, and then what? First, I'm going to stack. And then what? And so this man goes through his whole day and he tells you what to do. So you got to approach your action plan. And, and then what? From step A to Z. And that's how you get things done. People People don't get caught up in what to do. They have the information. They get caught up in information overload and what steps to take. So what we really do is we just help people, you know, come up with actionable strategies in a step-by-step -step process. Either I can help you do it or we have do it for you um, models to really just kind of achieve your purpose and align your purpose with passion in order to build capacity, um, gain confidence in leadership and lead with clarity in a way that feels comfortable for you as an individual. And I know I said a lot. I'm sorry. No, no you're totally fine. Do not apologize at all. I mean, you you brought us to Young Jeezy. I mean, so you just really <laughs> elevated the conversation for us. Made it a lot more exciting. No, thank you. And your passion shows um, brightly. And so I, I wanted to acknowledge that as well. Thank I can you. tell that you are definitely aligned, which is one of the principles that you talked about that people need to um, be mindful of. Um, so as a woman of color in a leadership role, what have been some of the unique challenges that you have faced and how have you navigated those? Right. So I think one of the biggest challenges is, you know, like, so I was I just came off of a training and someone at the training said, I know, and it was an African American woman with, you know, braids. She said, I know that I have big hair and a big personality. And when I come in a room, I take up space. So when I, I know that, and my sister told me this for years, she was like, you just appear bold. And so, you know, when I step into a room, I can be intimidating to people, even though that is not my intention. And it's it's a them thing, it's not a me thing, yeah. because I refuse to dim my light for anyone at this point in my career because I've had those spaces where I've had to do that. So I think the biggest challenge is, you know 
know, being an educated Black woman with a PhD and the intersectionality of those two identities is a double jeopardy. And even though I should have all these opportunities, um, you know, at my feet, I, a lot of times I don't get in rooms that I should be in or I don't get to, you know, be in part of conversations that I should have a say in. And so sometimes I have to create my own spaces just because sometimes people are intimidated by, you know, your intelligence and what you bring. And, you know, I think a few years ago, I would have probably let that bother me somewhat, but kind of just going through the journey to where I'm at now, I am unapologetically who I am. And I was listening to something, you know, yesterday and it was like you know you are the exception and I'm not better than anyone but I'm built different so I compete with Shanika and just within that self that within itself like you know you have to learn that you're not always going to be everybody's cup of tea and that's okay but you you're still going to have to respect it because the work speaks for itself so I think you know just for you know women of color and excuse my I'm, I'm a very direct person it's just a lot of times people plant in my face around my intelligence and you know the things that I bring to the table and my value and my worth. And I think that sometimes people want you to, you know, play small. And I don't think that you ever should be small. And if you're in a situation in an environment where, you know, you feel like you're drowning, like it's okay to walk away. And sometimes, like I said, that's kind of how I ended up in entrepreneurship because my peace of mind <laughs> is more important than anything. So I think it's just knowing one, your worth um, and not letting these situations break you down and I think a lot of times in corporate settings especially we as women of color um, deal with a lot of microaggressions and a lot of times there is no one in leadership that looks like you so sometimes you can be led to feel like you're crazy um, and I just want you to know that you are not and if you are feeling those experiences then it's some validity into that so again I think we just need to call these things out and recognize that Sometimes, especially when you're in that path of leadership, you've got the concrete ceiling um, for black women, which means, you know, with white women, it, glass can be broken, concrete has to be penetrated, and that is an intense um, barrier. So, you know, we've got to recognize that these things do exist, and especially in a society that's beginning to attack DEI. So I think it's just, again, just the intersectionality of being black and female presents its own challenges as you try to ascend, you know, into leadership. And a lot of times there is not any leadership training that's really designed to meet your needs. Yeah. You said a mouthful there. <laughs> um, I want to just kind of respond and react to some of what you're sharing. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting with a lot of this too, because it's resonating deeply as from one, another black, another black <laughs> Nika to, to one, another black Dr. Nika to right. another black Dr. Nika. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> But, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you often hear that people say that you're intimidating. And so that resonates with me because I have heard that, you know, throughout my professional career as well. And in the beginning, I used to take offense to that. And I used to like sit and think, well, Lord, what, what am, I mean, am I scary? What is it? You know, right. that. And then I finally had a mentee to say to me, she was like, no, I, I often use language like that to describe you. She said, but what I want you to know is that it's not in a bad way. Right. It's intimidating from a perspective of you cause me to level up when I'm in your presence. I right. know I can't just bring you anything. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. and so if people are going to be a part of your team, if they're going to be a part of your world, you know, you got to, they got to match your effort. Right. And so she said, sometimes that can feel a little intimidating, but it's not that you are intimidating because right. we are intimidated. But, you know, and so anyway, I wanted to share that with you for whatever it's worth. It sounds like you already are standing very confidently in who you are authentically, which I love. And that is very inspiring. Um, and as you were talking, you mentioned we need to stop playing small. And you know, my colleague, Amy Pecker, <laughs> who's on today, she has T-shirts that say stop playing small. And so I'm sure she was smiling from ear to ear. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I know, but you're right. We do shrink back. One of our guests shared into the chat a quote by Marianne Williamson. Um, Provenant, I wanted to share what this says. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. And I love that. He followed right. up with, you can't be responsible for others' feelings. No. That is on them. You know, check your own insecurities, right? Right. <laughs> um, and so I, I just love how um, we are, we're bringing some really enlightening points to the conversation that I'm sure is not only resonating with me, but also members of this community. Okay, so 
I want you to talk a little bit about your experience um, in terms of the key factors that you believe contribute to the success of women entrepreneurs, especially women of color, because again, that's one of those connection points, common points that we have. And by the way, let me just share, there was a couple of them. I mean, we are, first of all, we're both from the Carolinas. Okay. Right. <laughs> You've already acknowledged the name, you know, both from the Carolinas. You mentioned before, I heard you say that your background is getting adult learning. That was what my uh -huh. master's was in, adult learning. Okay. Um, we're both in the space of really helping to build healthy, strong cultures that take into account the needs of those marginalized individuals. There's just so much similarities here. So yeah. anyway, I'm feeling the love and the, and the kinship here. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so share with us, what are some of those things that you feel like contribute to the success of women entrepreneurs? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things women entrepreneurs need to recognize is you need community. And mm -hmm. And it's, it's because, you know, sometimes your family and friends, they're great support systems, but they're not, sometimes they're not entrepreneurs and they don't understand like some of those just lonely nights of entrepreneurship yeah. or I got to do work all the time because I'm the only person that's doing this until you're able to kind of scale. But I think community is important because you need to be around like-minded women that you trust and that you can bounce ideas off of. So um, ways you can do that is, you know, locally, I know like, tap into your local chamber of commerce. Sometimes a lot of them have um, minority business programs or even just entrepreneurship programs. Um, if the space doesn't exist, create your own. But a lot of co-working spaces, you can kind of tap into that. But having that community is really important. I also think it's super important to invest in yourself and recognize what you don't know. Because a lot of times in entrepreneurship, there is not a guidebook to it and there's no training. So you know what you know to a certain extent, but sometimes you're going to get in there and there's going to be things you don't know or you're not asking the right questions because you don't know which questions to ask and that's okay but be willing to pivot when you need to pivot yes. and um try new things because the other thing is like if you don't try things like you never know what's going to work so perfection yeah. is unattainable um in entrepreneurship and sometimes what you think is perfect your target audience may not think that um so you've got to test things out which leads me to kind of validating your ideas so before you start a business like do people really want this not is this something I want to create because if not you're going to just be stuck with something that you may not be able to push or product that you can't sell because you haven't made sure that there was a demand for it so I think you know tapping into that um trying things out because sometimes failure is you get your best lessons there like I ended up burning my business down last year because I launched this product that I thought was like the best thing to slice bread and it was a flop but it made me realize that what I was selling and my message wasn't like it wasn't hitting with my ideal client. And so the rebrand that you see is kind of how I'm showing up now. I knew that I needed to kind of simplify it because people wasn't really, you know, recognizing how they fell into my services. But if I wouldn't have had that flop, I might have continued down that same path. So sometimes you got to burn it down and start all over and it's okay. And I guess I kind of wrap that question up with like, as women entrepreneurs, like we hold ourselves sometimes to these ridiculous standards and these unexpected, un, un realistic expectations that you've made the line up here no one else so sometimes you've got to learn how to give yourself grace and just like go to sleep like you know like just lay down take a nap take a vacation take a break but give yourself some grace and recognize that if you're stressed out and you're depleted you can't help anyone and so just taking time to recognize that you've put yourself up to this goal or standard so it's okay if it doesn't work out that way and you can kind of take a break from it but I think you've got to build community believe in yourself be willing to make an investment in your business because you know a lot of people is like oh I'm looking for affordable and I'm like my goal is not to be affordable my goal is to add that value so one of the things I like to say I'm country um so you get what you pay for and you pay for what you get but if you're not willing to make an investment in your business as a business owner why would anyone else make that investment and guess what it's going to show up and how you show up in different ways whether it's your marketing whether it's in your copy whether it's in your website so sometimes if you don't know what you're doing take the time to hire someone or invest in someone but the other side of that is debt 
the people because you got a lot of people that's out here scamming or that don't necessarily have the expertise or the skill to do what they're selling so just make sure that you are vetting people and that you know they've got some testimonials and that you they have the credibility and trust for what you're about to make this investment in but I think a lot of times people just aren't willing to make that investment in their sales and so sometimes you know you just you might just keep running in that circle because you don't you, it's hard to do something you've never done. Um, mm -hmm. So, so you know, just keep that in mind and you've got to be willing to take time and take a chance on yourself because if you don't risk, take that risk on you, no one else is going to do that. Yeah, no, community is is so critically important. So I'm, glad, I'm so glad that you amplified that. You know, no one gets to where they are on their own. We don't know what we don't know. So we need thought partners. We need people who have gone before us, maybe have already experienced those things. And so, you know, find your brain trust groups, find your masterminds, what, whatever you have to do, but definitely make sure that you're in company with others who are on a similar um, journey because the weight of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is hard. It's hard. It's hard. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I also love that you brought to the conversation, the importance, especially for us as women of color, we tend to want to make sure that everything is perfect before mm -hmm. we even start. And then if we do that, we will rarely ever start really, right. because we're always <laughs> waiting for perfect to come. And I love how, again, in our chat, someone shared, I was once told don't sacrifice action for perfection. That's a good one. Um, similar. Yes. Yeah, similar. I've heard, I've heard the statement of don't let perfection become the enemy of progress. Right. Right. You know, we just got to keep moving and we can always refine along the way, but let's, let's not stop and let's make sure we're doing it. Um, not in isolation, but in community with others. I love that. So I want to give this community a heads up that we're going to be transitioning momentarily, and I will invite you to be able to share your questions, your comments, whatever is percolating for you. Perhaps there's some curiosities that are circulating in your head and you want to engage in the dialogue. We'd love to invite you to do so. If you're part of our Zoom community, you can do so by using the raise hand feature that lets me know that you're willing for me to call on you and add you to the spotlight. Or you can simply just place your comments or questions into the chat. The chat is live and popping right now. If you're on LinkedIn Live, and that's how you're joining the show today, then you certainly can also present your questions and comments. Just place them in the comment section and we're watching that and we'll bring them over here. Um, I don't see a hand up. So I'm going to, normally what I'll do is I'll give the audience kind of some time to percolate on it. But right now, since the hand is already up, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And this is Pavana and he's been actually really live into the chat. So he's a friend of our podcast, shows okay. up um, quite often. So I'm going to add him to the spotlight. Hi, Pavana, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic, Dr. Nikas. Hello. Uh, <laughs> how you, how you doing? Again, thank you for, so much for being here, uh, Dr. Shanika, as the special co-host. And obviously, Dr. Nika, it's always great to be a part of your, uh, or listen and be engaged yes. with your Um, So, one, thank you for sharing your story uh, and, and your upcoming t-shirt is the journey of plan B. I love that. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I have a very similar experience kind of I, for years. I was in that, in that mid space between I'm overqualified, but uniquely not as qualified as somebody else. Cause they've been doing the exact role that they're hiring for, for, uh, so I ended up starting uh, this image behind me is my logo called for a company called traveler consulting, which I started uh, in February of 2023. So um, that being said, you talked about leadership and uh, I'm curious as to your experience when working in corporations. And, and in my experience, I've seen most leaders are leaders of task more than anything. So they've been promoted because they are really high functioning right. task managers yeah. and never really taught how to be a leader of people whereas they're a, actually a leader of process. And that's two very, very different things. Um, and so I'm curious to, to hear your experience and how you've won, how you maneuvered that in corporate, but also more, more particularly in your consulting and coaching, how do you help those leaders to navigate, to move from task management to people management? Right. So I think First of all, you've got to think about it. What you're describing is the difference between management versus leadership. And those are two completely different things because management is a position of authority where leadership is a position of influence, right? So if you're tasked 
oriented, then you're more of an authoritative leader, which means people are only kind of getting behind you because they have to, or you're their subordinate, or they have to report to you. And in a management role, you don't want people to show up like that. You want people to, again, like I said earlier, people leave people, people don't leave jobs. And so it's the difference between power and force. You want people to willingly get behind what you say. And that's that influence of leadership versus a, if I've got a do tasks orientation, then that's making me force you to do something. So I think it's just understanding the difference between management and leadership. And I think a lot of that requires training around um, emotional intelligence and self-awareness. Um, I heard a term this weekend in a training, let's, this week of this training that I was doing that I want to explore further, but it was around social intelligence. And that's how other people show up in spaces. And so I think you've got to recognize that in your talent. And then also recognize that everybody's not made for a management role and you know thinking about that when we promote from within because sometimes it's just like oh well they've been doing it or it's a seniority thing versus putting the best person in that role so I think it's also you know equipping people within your team with some of those personality assess personality assessments so you know Myers-Briggs um DISC um the Enneagram when there's different ones um that you can kind of tap into so that you understand how you lead but also how you lead others and I think 360 feedback can be really important there but I think the basis of it is recognizing that there's a big difference between management and leadership and just because you are a position in a position of authority that does not make you a leader and I think how you approach it is I tell people leadership is about the golden rule be the leader that you wish you've always had and if you kind of follow that framework I don't really think you can go too wrong with it but I think it's going back to recognizing there's a stark difference between leadership and management. Awesome. Well stated. So thanks so much for your question, Kwabana. And yeah, it's important to know the difference between a leader of people versus a leader of process. I think that you summed that up very nicely, Dr. Shanika. Um, so again, keep those questions coming. If you have um, some curiosities that you would love to be able to socialize mm -hmm. around, I'm not seeing any hands raised so far. Um, and so I'm going to give you some moments to continue percolating on that while I go to my next question. So okay. we've touched on mentorship kind of broadly, and I want to now unpack that a little bit deeper because that's another similarity that you and I share. I do believe in the power of mentorship. I think it's one of the most selfless things that a person can do to mm -hmm. add value to another individual. And so when we think about the role of mentorship and community and supporting the professional development, specifically of women of color, how does the Brown Girl Collective of the Triad, which I talked about when I was reading your bio, aim to foster this? Yeah, so the Brown Girl Collective of the Triad kind of just, again, stemmed from my passion and my research. And in my own community, I noticed that we had a lot of women's groups, but there was nothing really that centered the lived experience in an authentic and genuine way for Black and Brown women. And I'm just crazy enough and foolish enough to think that, hey, I can change the world. So um, I had called one of my girlfriends up and I was like, I have this idea. And she, her background is event planning. And so I was like, you know, I know we've got like two months, um, but if this is unrealistic, tell me, um, but I want to create this space and I want to kick it off. We had, we've got a new food hall in my community. I was want to, I want to kick it off at the food hall and have this mixer where we invite black and brown women to come in and build community. And we highlight black and brown women businesses. And just, again, this is a safe space. And so I pulled this together in like two weeks. Um, and so that's where the Brown Girl Collective of the triad emerged. And so that was in November of 2022. Um, and so we've been growing for about two years now, but we've been able to just do so many things. And so we do social events. And so that's around, again, creating those safe spaces. And the funny thing is, is like we're a lot of I'm a fake extrovert. Like I'm really an introvert and I like genuine and intimate conversations. I don't really prefer mm -hmm. small talk. And one of the beauties of the Brown Girl Collective of the Triad is we create space. I tell people it's not that. It's not, you know, that fake networking experience or the Balls Girl Brunch. It's like really where you can come in and meet someone and build a genuine relationship or you know connection and so that's kind of where our social networking comes in but then within that I also partner with black women on businesses to come to their spaces and to bring the brown girl collective into that space so we've done networking mixers mm -hmm. we've done pop-up events we've done you know different things and then again just by the nature of my background I also do the leadership development trainings around black women's um, professional experiences so last summer we did a leadership retreat um, we've done a book club and so again it's about creating these spaces 
spaces and experiences for black and brown women to be able to feel safe, to build that community, but also to break bread with like-minded women who share their experiences and that we can grow and mentor and network amongst each other. And again, just feel safe doing it and being able to show up as our authentic selves because, you know, unfortunately, we know that Black women can't always show up authentic, right. authentically. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, no, that is that is so true. And and thank you. I want to on behalf of of you know all Black and Brown women. I just want to thank you for putting yourself out there so freely to help create meaningful impact. You know, in right. the community. Um, now you and I are from the Carolinas, but for those who don't know what the triad is, can you just maybe give a little bit of insight? Sure. <laughs> so in North Carolina, you've kind of got three big urban um areas. So of course the RT. TP is the Raleigh Durham area and then you've got Charlotte but the triad is Greensboro High Point and Winston-Salem and the really cool thing is we are in the central part of the state so you know we're about probably two and a half three hours from where Dr. Nika lives um, four hours from Atlanta two hours from Charlotte but we're in the center part of the state and it just again has a lot of different things and we're up and coming because we've gotten a few some of the rural areas just really got like some big uh, like a big Toyota plant so it'll be a lot of probably in the next five to ten years the triad will be blowing up a lot but again it's just a mid-sized community that's really tight knit Got it. Got it. So while we're on the subject of making meaningful impact in, in our communities, what advice would you give Dr. Shanika to aspiring leaders, especially those from underrepresented backgrounds who may hear your story, they know of your involvement in the community and what you're doing through this collective? What advice would you give them um, if they're seeking to make meaningful impact? Um, just show up show yeah. up you know and be willing to take a risk with yourself because it's like mm -hmm. you know sometimes in what we think are challenges are often our biggest opportunities but you have yeah. to be open-minded to you know different things and so I think it's just showing up and showing up unapologetically right like knowing who you are and getting comfortable like when I learned, fell in love with who I was like you can't tell me about me like I love you know being who I am and I put something up on LinkedIn the other day I was like if people knew my story to be who I am right so you know not being afraid to embrace your own lived experiences and showing up in your space and being okay. And like, you know, I know that I take up space and that's okay. Cause I told someone yesterday, I said, I know that my light warms, it doesn't burn. So, you know, be willing to show up and just be confident in who you are. Like one of the things my sister told me, like, she's my like cheerleader she was like you know confidence is a stain that can't be wiped off and people can sense can see it when you're not confident so I don't really believe in faking it till you make it I feel like you've got to get confident in who you are and if you feel like you're lacking something do that inner work to figure out what you need to do to really fall in love with who you are and I think my last piece of advice and so this may be an unpopular opinion but you know I kind of removed <laughs> imposter syndrome from my vocabulary because it's very hard to be an imposter or in a system that wasn't designed for you. So how are you, you know, an imposter, right? So yes, it's great language, but sometimes we have to be very careful of the labels that we apply to ourselves. Um, and again, you know, the system wasn't designed for you. So you're not an imposter. It's, the, it's operating exactly the way that it was meant to. So, you know, being cool with that and, you know, just having that awareness around it and transparency, right? So just being okay to like call things out. I get in trouble a lot because I'm blunt, but I'm like, it is what it is is and a sugarcoating it ain't gonna make a difference but we have to be willing to have these intentional conversations around some of these things to get real change and you know one of the things my grandmother always told me is was you must stand for something you believe in or you will fall for anything so I sleep real good at night because you know I you know I'm super intentional and I you know, really try to be a good human and show up with um, just I really genuinely want to help people. So I think you got to know who you are and be confident in that. So, so much I want to say right now, first of all, <laughs> you said something that I want to make sure we back up to, because I think it's worth repeating. And it was the quote that your sister gave you, your cheerleader, as you described yeah. her, but confidence <laughs> is like a stain that cannot be erased. Yes, either you have it or not. People can see it. And if it's there and it's really there in a very authentic way, no matter what's happening around you, that confidence is still going <laughs> to show forth. And so as I am, you know, sharing this space and this time with you, Dr. Shanika, what keeps coming up in my mind is how I so desperately wish for all Black women to be able to live in the level of confidence with, about themselves 
the way that you are showing up today. I mean, <laughs> I think that, that is a superpower and a gift that to your point, as you mentioned, imposter syndrome is not something that a lot of people um, or accustomed to doing because, again, of the society that we lived in and how we've been told to shrink back and that we're not enough. And and so I, I love this confidence and I can see how just having people that are surrounded by, around you, it becomes contagious. And now we're Thank like you. having this domino effect on others. And that is just a beautiful thing. I don't know if y'all are hearing it, but I am definitely <laughs> hearing it. I love it. Thank you. No, I'm definitely hearing it. So that's great. Yeah, we have a comment that says we cannot be imposters in spaces that were not created for us. Yes, absolutely. 100%. I call the imposter syndrome a misdiagnosis because you're mm -hmm. right. I think our mindset needs to be that is not that is not what's happening to me, right? You know, and so I I, I love, love, love the, the confidence that's showing forth. It's very, it's very inspirational. Um, so we've talked about so much of, of the things that you're connected to and that you do. You are, you're deeply connected to your community. We talked about the collective. You are an entrepreneur. So I'm curious, especially in this, um, this state where so many people find themselves overworked and we're in this burnt out culture, how do you balance all of these various roles, Dr. Shanika, and responsibilities, you know, business owner, community leader, advocate for inclusive leadership? What are some of the things that you find that helps to replenish your cup when it's needed? Right. So I am the queen of a nap. I, I love sleep because I feel like it's never the, the was, I, I'm in the nap ministry. Like for your girl, like that's the one thing I probably never get enough of. So I really try to prioritize a nap, whether it's 15, 20 minutes. My favorite is a two hour. I feel like I'm replenished if I can get a four hour one in, but I am the queen of a nap. I just had a conversation with my mom this morning who's in town visiting, but yeah, take a nap. So I take a nap. Um, I also prioritize friends with my fam time with my friends and family. So um, me and my sisters are close. Close. Me and my mom are close. Like, so when she's here, like I intentionally every morning we get up, we have coffee. My girlfriends, um, we eat. Like that's our thing. We're going to get some good food and probably a drink. And then I, I like to craft. Um, so I have a craft room. I like to make things with my hand. I sew, I make bonnets. You so bake. And I bake. So baking is a stress reliever if I'm super yeah. stressed out or if I just want to like if I'm in a oh, like I've made the past my mom, my family's here. My mom's been here. So I made a pound cake. I've made strawberry brownies. I don't know what I'm going to make this Sunday, but we've been eating good over here because that's again, that's what it's all about. And I think really just recognizing sometimes you got to just take some time because as an entrepreneur, like I work a lot and I will work myself to death. But I also recognize, you know what? I'm going to sleep like I was out of town um, training for three days this week. And I think it was like uh, Wednesday night. And I was really like, I'm tired. And it was like 930. And of course, there's always work to do. But you, it was there the next day. And it was fine. So I'd say take a nap. Um, if you can take time to vacation and travel, that's important. And again, sometimes I just like to stop my day. And if it's nice outside, like get outside, go get some sun, take a walk. But you know, just having an awareness of when you are reaching your thing. Like I know when I get really cranky or, you know, I start to get a sinus infection that it need it's time for me to slow down. And so sometimes uh, that's a quick your body trip. Tells you. Your body tells you, and you know, your body will shut you down. That's always this telltale sign that you're doing the most and too much. So have an awareness of your triggers, but just taking time. And then I like a good sweet and some good food. So if you feed me, give me some time to sleep. That's how I replenish and let me make something. I'm good to go. Comfort food, nap, crafts, all the things. I love it. It's fantastic. Now, we have about eight minutes left. And so I want to do two things before we close out today. Okay. The first is I want to take um, an audience question. So Andrea Payne is here today. We're so glad to see you. I've added you to the spotlight. Um, and then the second thing I want us to do is I want to make sure we can wrap up, Dr. Shanika, with you talking about a very special initiative that you have coming up. I want this audience to be able to know all about that. So welcome, yes. Andrea. Share your question or comment. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Nika and Dr. Shanika. Ooh, th this has been wonderful, and I thank you. I love what you said about confidence, and I just wanted to quickly ask, what would you say to someone who's had a parallel journey to yours? They've been trying to break into the space, and they've been shut out, excluded, and, and their confidence has taken a hit. So what would you say to mm -hmm. them to encourage them or, or uh, shift them in, in the direction of boosting their confidence. Right. So look, let me find my phone because I posted about this yesterday. But my first comment is going to be 
go where you are celebrated, not where you're tolerated. That's number mm-hmm. one. So you've got to learn how to value and appreciate what you bring to the table. And then when you do that, like anything is possible. But it's it's really just, again, about knowing who you are and knowing your worth and not willing to compromise on that. And sometimes those doors are closed because you may, it's like this, right? So sometimes people want to be the big fish in the pond, right? And, and if, if you're the big fish in the pond, you can only adapt and expand so much, right? But when you're the big fish in the ocean, Ocean, your growth is unlimited so sometimes you got to realize that sometimes God will create blockages because you got to move past that situation because you're bigger than that and so um something that I had posted yesterday that I just felt like I was listening to this sermon from Mike uh, Pastor Mike McClure Jr. so if you want to hear a word go listen to that it was like from two weeks ago but um he was talking about just, you know, like how people show up and it was that, you know, you are the exception. So he said, this is not your season to fit in. You are the exception and you're built different. God has given you favor. It's a nothing but God season. So we have to walk by faith and not by sight. So you have to recognize that you were called to do something right. And what you were called to do, nobody else on this earth has that talent, that purpose, but you. And if you let the naysayers get in your way, sometimes you got to quiet the noise and do what God called you to do. And a lot of times we know, but we come up with, you know, all these things to stop us from walking in our purpose. So sometimes you don't have to be in those spaces. Sometimes you got to create the space because, again, you think I'm going to stop you not let me in that room going to stop me from talking because guess what? I got the tools, the talent and the time to create everything that I need to do. So tap into that talent that you have and do what only you're supposed to do on this earth. I hope that answered your question. That. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Andrea. I really appreciate your question um, that you have presented. That was that was great. So remember your purpose, summing this up, and then be willing to create the space that you need in order to deliver. Yes, we try to fit into spaces, but sometimes if we feel like our confidence is waning, maybe it's because we're, again, we're trying to fit into those spaces instead of create your own path, right? All right. So I love that. I love that. Um, don't y'all love how we've been taken to church today? We've got, <laughs> you know, Jeezy in the conversation. <laughs> so much going on today. I love it. Okay. So I did say that I wanted to make sure that we had enough time to give you a chance to share something incredible that you have coming up. There is an Empower Her Summit. And so I want you to tell us about that as well as close us out in these final four mo- moments that we have with anything else that we have not had a chance to touch on today that you're feeling a lot of energy around and you want your audience to be um, aware of? Yeah. So I, like I said, I am passionate about developing time, talent for young women and women of color. So I have another initiative called She Inspired, which is around creating entrepreneurial leadership experiences for high school girls um, and exposing them to different things. And so as part of that initiative, we are hosting the Empower Her Summit next Friday. And again, I'm local to High Point, North Carolina, but we're going to have over 50 young women. We actually ended up having to, like the space is not big enough for the demand but we have we had over 70 young women apply but we're cutting the list down to 50 but we have 50 young women showing up next Friday for the Empower Her Summit which is a day full of empowerment around entrepreneurship leadership confidence building and um, awareness for young women and so I am hosting this through my business and I'm depending on my network and my communities to support this initiative and fundraise and so we're collecting um support in a few different ways. Um, We have an online donation link. And if you donate via that link, the funding will be used to sponsor the lunch, um, purchase of swag and supplies associated with the summit. We really want it to be a memorable experience because again, this is about exposing young women to things outside of what they may see in school on a day-to-day basis. And it's going to be at a local co-working space called Transform Greensboro. So it's going to be awesome. And then the other piece is we have an Amazon wish list that has some inspirational items on um, the swag that uh, that we're going to use for swag to, again, just bless the young women. And then if you want to, you know, contribute a door prize or anything of that nature, you can send me an email and I can get you my information or you can message me on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, but Twitter. Um, But again, this is really about just building up young women and creating spaces for young women to show up as their authentic self and equip them with the tools because we know that these, these young girls, they have it hard and they're dealing with a lot. And so I know what it, I don't have kids, but I know 
what it takes to have a village. So I'm just trying to show up and again, doing the work that I was called to do and really creating experiences for these young women. So we just want the Empower Her Summit to be great. We've got some great sponsors in already, but you know, everything helps. So if you're willing and you know, God puts it on your heart to give, um, please, you know, just support a wonderful initiative because it's going to be impactful. And probably within the next two weeks, uh, like I said, the events the 26. So starting in May, you'll start to see some of the pictures and things coming from that. But we're super excited. Um, the pr uh, principal, she and I are leadership high point classmates. So again, this is just something that we're super passionate about. And I feel like it's a need and we're looking to expand this program. So if we raise more than we need and guess what we'll be doing another one in another school or some type of Saturday Academy because we have to give back to our kids because the youth are the future and we've got to make sure that we're making that investment in them and all it takes is one person to change a child's life all it takes is one person well, we've shared information a link actually into the chat for you to check out more about the empower her summit and I have to say I'm feeling kind of sad for the, the 20 or so women that were not able to be a part of this cohort so we are being very hopeful that you're going to get the support that you need so that those other women can um, can partake. We've also shared all of your contact information. It has been such a joy, Dr. Shanika, to share yes. this space and time with you. I am on a high, feeling all of the energy. It's, it's, it's transferred over <laughs> to me, hopefully to all of our audience members as well. And I'm going to take that through on into the weekend and hopefully next week as well. But thank you for being here. We really do appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us. We hope to see you back next week for another episode of Intentional Conversations Podcast. Have a great and safe weekend. Bye-bye.